her lupus has caused kidney complications, and she'll be going to specialist and having tests this week. So we'd appreciate prayers for that. Anyone else that anybody has any updates on? Wow, this is a different group today this morning, isn't it? Yeah. I need to put my best friend, she's home from the hospital now, and uh, she has Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. And um, it's kind of a trial basis as to whether she's going to be able to stay there because there's just the two of them. So she needs a lot of prayers yet. What's her name? Joanne Hicks. 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 <clears throat> and Lynn will be going for tests pretty soon on the June 7th, so we need to pray for her also. Uh, I know we already are, but that's a little update. Yeah, she had a rough week. Of course, that Texas thing. Yes, that's We need to be praying for the Southern Baptist <coughs> Convention right now. We need to pray for, uh, pray for the uh, parents of those children. Oh, yeah. They got yeah, yeah. the Texas shit. It yes. covers everything because there's so many out there. Just, law enforcement, everything. What's going on with the Southern Baptist Convention? Uh, Luke will be going over it a little bit, but you know they're starting to make known all of the sexual abuse and the stuff that's been covered over, they've decided it's time to uncover. And so there's going to be a lot of a lot of hurt over all of that, I believe. Yes. And uh, we have to we need to pray carefully that Satan doesn't get into that because we don't need anything else out there that gives the world another excuse why they think right. the church is evil or wrong. Right. Yeah. We just have to be very careful. Fred Paul needs prayers. He's not feeling well at all. And we need to pray that he will love his water. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Love that water. Anyone else? That's all that I have. Yes, my understanding that uh, while I was away, she just moved to conference room 215, and the follow-up game plan is uh, both for her and Mr. Theo, the ideal would be to move to uh, John Knox Manor to assisted living, and so that's what their, uh, their plans, that's what they're shooting for. Okay, anyone else? Mitzi, would you open us with prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day and the sunshine. Lord, there's so many of us that are listening. Each one is special to you. Lord, be with those that we have named and not named that you know about. Lord, so much heart, so much disease, so much sadness, so much grief, hardships at work, family ties that are broken. So we pray that your hand will be on this entire list and the unspoken also. We pray for the lesson today. We pray that at this Memorial Day, we pray for our veterans and the ones that are still serving. But we thank you for all the ones who gave their lives so that we could be free to be here today. And we lift up the Baptist Convention, Lord, that it will be done your way with your blessing. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. This is our last lesson in this book. And before I start, I want to thank Ina because I understand she did a wonderful job last Sunday. So Ina, I am so grateful. And I know that that made everybody else wish that they had that opportunity also. Well, so the only thing is, <laughs> is Bill and Johnny still 
welcome. It will be the new book. The new book is right here. So I'd love for someone to volunteer before I have to come and look you in the eye and beg. So there's this. Okay, let's get started. Our last lesson for this, for this book. And we've been talking about when Jesus, remember, he has the disciples and he's on the hill and he's been discussing end times. So that's, and this is the last lesson we have on that. And our question is, when, when have you been caught unprepared? When I got off the plane in San Antonio and nobody spoke English and they had to rent a car and they said, you better go as fast as the traffic. And I didn't know that meant 95. Oh. And I was going 95 with some I could have Texas done that. <laughs> Definitely unprepared. Anyone else? You know, uh, I hate when I go, I go somewhere and I realize I've dressed in a, you know, I didn't dress, I either didn't dress up enough or I didn't dress down enough. You know, that feeling of not being ready. But we are to be prepared, even though we don't know when, because Christ is coming back. And he has given us a lot of um, warnings warnings and signs and said be prepared don't fear it be prepared don't try to guess when he's coming just be prepared be ready be ready and our point for today is that we are to grow in christ as we wait for his return and so um bill and johnny i can already tell so let's start with jackie at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they didn't take oil with them, but the wise ones took oil in their flasks with their lamps. When the groom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. All right, here we have Jesus, and we know Jesus is a master teacher. And when he teaches, he often uses uh, parables. And this is the parables. We call it the parable of the ten virgins. And he used this because um, it gets his point across. And we're, we look at these, and we can see so many lessons and so many truths in these parables and he uses it, and he says it with such confidence and with such power. And no one since in all of history can teach like Jesus. He is the master. And so when we look at this, we, he says, he starts it with, at that time. At that time. So, you know, he had already been talking about be ready. He had already been talking about other signs. I know Ina taught last week about it. And so he's saying, when this happens, it's uh, how you should prepare for his returning. It calls it the kingdom of heaven. And it's also called uh, the kingdom of God. But it, it's talking about the, that future time when it all the end times, they're all come, come to be. Heaven is used as a synonym for God. And so this is talking about the final judgment and the ultimate rule of God. And so he says, it will be like. And so when we look at it, it will be like ten virgins. And so when we look at that, when we look at the time of uh, him teaching about this, we would call these girls now the bridesmaids. You know, this is ten bridesmaids. They've had a wedding, and now they're waiting to go to the banquet that the bride's uh, parents put on for the bride and groom. And so when we look at that, my lesson writer said, and I've, I've never thought of it this way, these could have been servants in the groom's home. We don't know. But they're, they're probably friends of the bride. They are her bridesmaids. There's 10 of them. And, you know, as bridesmaids, um, and even more so now, you have jobs that you're supposed to do. You have responsibilities that you do as for being selected as a bridesmaid. And so they have a job, and they are to take their lamps and accompany and light the way for the bride and groom when they come back. And, um, 
Now, I guess I've done all of that. That's enough. Let's just turn the page. When we look at this, the bridesmaids, you know, when he uses the parables, the characters always represent something. So here, the ten bridesmaids or the ten virgins represent all of humanity. All of humanity. And of course, the groom here represents Jesus. And so, they were given strict orders. They were supposed to stay. That's their job. They're to stay put until the bridegroom comes, and then they're to be ready to accompany them. And here, we have the wedding banquet, and that represents, we've all, we all know, the great feast when we all get to heaven that we'd all be going to. And so it says, at the appropriate time, so when it, it, he's there, they are to take their lamps and go out and meet the groom. Now, when we think of lamps, we think of little lanterns, but that's not what this is supposed to be. When Jesus said it, according to that day, this would be poles, with the, we would probably call them more torches, mm -hmm. with the rags wrapped around it, and you've got to have the oil to keep it burning. And um, you need the oil to keep make it bright, because remember, these are the lights that they're using. And so it says here that he calls them, five of them foolish and five of them wise. He's not talking about any other descriptions about them. He's not saying uh, five are pretty, five are ugly, five are tall, five are short, five are this. There, they're all equal. They're all equal. They're probably all dressed in the same clothes. There's no distinguishing uh, features except that they're some were foolish and some were wise. Now, foolish here does not mean that they were acting silly. You know, because a lot of times we say foolish means, oh, you're acting a fool because they're being so silly. Or that they're not smart. You know, like, oh, that they're not, they're just not smart. That's not what he's talking about. Foolish here is because they didn't prepare. They didn't think about what could happen. They were not ready for what was happening in the future. And that made them foolish. The wise ones, they prepared. They made sure that they had extra oil. They made sure that they had flask. It said they took oil in their flask with their lamps. The others, they're just having a grand old time, living life. They're in the party. They're, in the, they're with them. And so they're, they don't prepare. They're not ready. They think they have plenty of time that, you know, they'll, when it comes, they'll, off they'll go. But... <laughs> The groom was delayed. We don't know why. It doesn't say why the groom is delayed. That's not important in this story. Even though he lets them, you know, he gives it, but it's a very long time. He's delayed a long time. They probably thought the way most weddings go, we've had it, here we go, let's go. But that's not, it's, he's delayed. And it, he's delayed so long that they all become drowsy, and they all fall asleep. Nothing's wrong with that. There's nowhere in there that says the wise were foolish when they fell asleep, or the wise were, the wise, they shouldn't have become drowsy. There's nothing about that. They all became tired. They all fell asleep. Not a problem. Not a problem, because the wise were ready. The wise were ready. Um, the torches keep burning. They didn't put their torches out during that time. They keep burning. Um, and so we get to what happens next. Now, Ina, you let everybody else read last week, so I'm going to let you read. <laughs> Matthew, oh, wait a minute. Let's ask her a question. What makes it difficult to be diligent as we wait for Christ's return? Well, we get distracted by daily happenings. You know, when that shooting happened, um, uh, I got an alert on my phone, so I turned on Fox News, and it was just horrific. And that whole day, I mourned for those families and the pictures of, I can't find my daughter. Well, she was dead. She's one they couldn't mm -hmm. identify because she got shot in the face. But, and, I, and I started grieving, and God was saying, why don't you just pray? Get down and pray and talk to me. And But I was distracted for so long just watching them. My heart was just, well, I mean, I was crying so hard, I, I got a headache from it, watching it. So I, God was saying, stop that and pray for them. They need your prayers. Intervene for them because they can't pray right now. And that's what happens. I think we get distracted with what's going on in our family. We can't help it. We love our families so much. Oh, 
sometimes who uh, when you're going through troubles and trials it's that's hard yes. waiting for Christ to come you know And that's why we should be there for them because they're going through it. Right. People are going through it. I agree. It. And when we're not going through it, that's our responsibility as as a fellow Christian to be praying and lifting them up because they're weak, they're tired, they're hurting. And we get distracted by, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. We let little things that are not important get in the way. That's the way I feel. I, God really woke me up that day when I, he was like, why aren't you praying for me? Also, if things are going great, yeah, you're right. right. You, you know, we, we, we forget God when things are going great. Yeah. You know, that they were all at a party. Things were going great. You yeah. know, they weren't expecting life to hit them at that time. It was supposed to be a wonderful time, a joyful time. Yeah, it's a great time. And you think about Memorial Day too. You know, it's not about celebration and having a party and eating and having fun because there's people, families that lost their loved ones but the ultimate sacrifice they gave for us to have our freedom. So I've been praying for all the veterans too, you know? <clears throat> True. Anyone else? Okay. Let's look at our next section. Ina, would you read Matthew 25, 6 through 9? In the middle of the night, there was a shout. Here's the groom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps are gone out. The wise ones answered, No, there won't be enough for us and for you. Go instead to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. All right, this is hard teaching here. It really is hard teaching. It says, first of all, let's look at in the middle of the night. Now, the middle of the night is usually when you're the most at peace because you're asleep. You're dead asleep, and you're not aware of everything going around. So they're, they're asleep. They're, they're tired. And all of a sudden, here comes that announcement. Here's the groom. Now, the Jewish day, it went from sundown to sundown. And even though they didn't have a clock or Fitbits or whatever it is, that they were well aware of time. You know, the Romans learned how to look at the sky, the stars, they, the sun, and, and tell time. The Jewish people, they would divide the day up into watches. So this is probably about the third watch. It's, it's dark. It's quiet. It's when everybody is asleep. And someone says, here comes the groom. Now, Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom. We know all of that from Matthew 9, 15, when John's disciples came and asked, why, why aren't y'all doing what we're doing? And Jesus responds, and Jesus said to them, can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. So Jesus had already been referring to himself as the bridegroom. That goes all the way back to Old Testament. Uh, I can give you some scriptures. I'm only going to read one of them, though. If you want to look at it this afternoon, Isaiah 54, 4 through 6, Isaiah 62, 4 and 5, and Hosea 2, 19 and 20, and I'll read that one. I will betroth you to me forever. And me is capital M. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and loving kindness and mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness and you shall know the Lord. And so that goes all the way back to Old Testament, which I think is so interesting because Jesus knows the word because he is the word. And it, it's, it's so interesting the way he just puts it all together and pulls it together and so when we have this groom coming and they weren't expecting it jesus is saying i'm going to come just like that when you don't even know when i'm coming i'm going to come because remember jesus doesn't even know when he's coming back god didn't tell him 
you know, God hasn't let it be known to him or anyone else. And so you're to always be ready. But just like with those foolish virgins, some will be ready and some will not. It's going to be catching them uh, by surprise. All right, so they get up. All of them get up. All of them are excited. They all get up. They all trim the, their lamps. And so they're getting ready. They're cutting off the burn part. They're soaking their cloths in oil because they had brought, five of them had brought more. They were ready. They were prepared. Nobody thought that would happen. It usually doesn't, but they're ready. And so the foolish ones realize they don't have enough. They were short-sighted. And so what do they do? They go to their friends because assume, you know, they're probably all very close friends. Bridesmaids are usually best friends. And so they go to their friends, they go to the, their loved ones and they share. Now, remember this is a parable and he's teaching. You know, usually we think Jesus would say, yes, you should share, be kind, uh, to one another, but this is letting, because remember he's teaching the truth. And no matter how much you love them, how much you want to bring them along with you, you cannot share your salvation with anyone else. God is not going to save anyone based on what you did. You know, it doesn't matter how much good I do in the world, it can't be given to someone else for their salvation. My salvation is a one-on-one -on -one thing you have with Christ, you know, and we have a hard time with that. We don't get that, but that's what he's telling them now. He is saying if they're not ready, when their time is up, it's too late, no matter how much you love them, or how much you want to save them. Um, and so they begin to look for other things. You know, what do we do? What do we do? And they say, you, if we share with you, there won't be enough. You've got to go find. You've got to go find your own. And so they run off. You know, they run off. They go and try to find some. They say, go find some from somebody else. Go see if someone will sell you some. But while they're gone, here comes the groom. Now, in my book, the teacher book, they put in there that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic was a very much a wake-up call, and it was a wake-up call. Uh, we're believers, so it was, a, it was a scary event for us, but not as scary as for those that were not saved or the very young. It really woke up the very young. It shook them because, you know, young people think it will go on forever. You know, when you were young, you were like that. You know, we think, oh, we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. But COVID, really, because it hit everybody. And we, we couldn't put our finger on why this person wouldn't have any symptoms, but yet this person ended up on a ventilator. You know, so it was that same type. What it says is, this parable is about his returning. But we also have to remember it also may be that we die before he returns. And so you still have to be ready. Um, even if we're, he doesn't come for hundreds of years, he, he tells us your time will run out. You know, your time will run, run out and you need to be ready because if you're not, there are dire consequences that it's too late. It's too late. So here's our, our question. What do these verses teach us about the need for individual readiness? That we all answer for ourselves. You know, your children say, you know, I remember when I was young, they'll say, well, my parents were, you know, I'm gonna get in on my mother's coattail. I remember hearing that as a small child and, and remember hearing a preacher saying, you're not getting in on nobody's coattail because each person has to answer. No matter how much you want your child, they say, you can't pray them into heaven. It, it's, a, it's an individual response. You know, and that lesson really brought it out. It, it really did, and it, it makes you think too, because you know, you think about college, oh, we have legacies. Yeah. You know, oh, we'll get in because we're a legacy. You know, so-and-so, so they'll let us in. Well, that's not the way it works. 
That's not the way of God. And he, we said, well, that's cruel. God is supposed to be this loving God. And we're going to look at that a, a lot more with the next session, but section. But he tells us, he told us, he let us know. You know, it's not that he's trying to be wrong. He, he, he lets you know. Don't be surprised. He lets you know, which makes it so very important for us to share our faith. That's right. You know, we, we think, oh, you know, they were a good person. They were a really good person. But he told us what our good is like. Something about filthy rags. Well, you know, and how many wants to wash, how many people want to wash their face with a filthy rag? No, you know, we, it's not good enough. We need to just <laughs> always be ready, you know, because we don't know when he's coming. And he's warning us and giving us all the information to because uh, I asked I asked two guys that was in front of me at Arby's when I came back from Lens. I said can I ask y'all a question? They said yes. I said, are y'all Christians? And this one guy, he kind of hesitated a little bit, and then he said, yes, ma'am. And the other one said, I don't go to church like I ought to. And I looked at him and I said, I'm not asking you how many times you go to church, but do you know Jesus as your Savior? So I explained what that meant, you know. And the one guy said yes, so I don't know if the other guy was or not. But, you know, we folks tell the good news wherever we are, you know. So We may even think anyway. Yeah, I hope so. I, I hope, hope so, so too. Well, you open windows today. It goes with our lesson because in Revelation 1-7, which is part of that, it says there's going to be so much weeping when he comes back. And that's the ones who are not prepared. You know, and it says no one can blame anybody but themselves because in America, we, we hear it on TV. You can get a Bible anywhere. You can get track. You hear it on the radio. There is zero excuse for anybody in America to not know about Jesus. You choose not to. It's like the foolish. They chose not to take that pot. They're probably saying, oh, this glass would be too heavy. I don't want to carry it. Or, you know, just <laughs> excuses. That's what comes in my mind when I was studying all this and reverend. Just excuses you may oh I want to have fun. Terry will tell you all the time when he was young, I want to have fun when I'm young and then I'll accept Christ when I'm older. He said, but it didn't happen the way he said he's glad because who said he was gonna live till he was old? Right. He didn't know that. I didn't know that at 16. I mean you don't know that. Our day of seeing him could be today. Doesn't mean when he's actually coming back to call us, we could already be with him. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Did you have something to add? No, I'm just taking it all in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, I don't like to hear people say a loving God wouldn't send you to hell or whatever. Yeah. He doesn't. He gives us all a free mind and a free will, and it's our choice. So if you reject him, then you go to hell when you die. You know, so... Uh, there's no great area with God. It's either black or white. So. Well, it, it's the same loving God that, that sent his son to die on the cross to save us from our sins mm -hmm. that right. they're now trying to blame for letting all these children get killed in Texas. Oh, and, yeah. And letting each person say, why would a loving God do that? Well, that's evil, though. I, you know. They, Bad things happen. To good people. Right. The rain falls on the to just Christian and the people. unjust. You know, so. Christian people go through things just like non Christian people. And if you want really want to know the answer to that, live your life in a way that you can ask God for yourself once you get in heaven. But we need to look at what Christ did for us. So yeah. why should we be any different that we don't suffer? You know, because he suffered the ultimate suffering for us. So I know my my children have told Lynn it's not fair. And her husband has told her that, that it's not fair that she's going through what she does. And she goes, why isn't it fair? She said, it's not fair for those little uh, children that are at St. Jude's Hospital that are sick. It's not fair either, but 
who am I to say it's not fair for me because I'm going through this or whatever, you know. So we don't know, we don't ever know what we're going to go through. We just need, I always, I'm so thankful I always have God with me wherever I am. And, and he can help me through whatever I'm going through, you know. And we have to live our life like that so we can show everybody else, you know, even though I'm going through this, I'm still trusting God through all of it. Amen. 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 All right, Matthew 25, 10 through 13. Beth said she wants to read. <laughs> <laughs> um, when they had gone to buy some, the groom arrived, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the rest of the virgins also came and said, Master, Master, open up for us. He replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, be alert, because you don't know either the day or the hour. All right, so they panicked, which I would think would happen to anyone. They panicked. Uh, they take off, and it was too late. The groom came, and those who were ready, those who were ready, went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. You know, it's just like the ark, yeah. and the door was shut. And um, it doesn't say whether they were able to find any more and then came back. If they later, you know, got something, a substitute, it doesn't say. It doesn't matter. It's too late. When too late comes, it's too late. And they even knew who he was. They're yelling, Master, Master, open up for us. And he says, I don't know you. Now, you know he knows them. He knows them. He knew who they were. But he wasn't going to stop the celebration for those who were ready, the ones that were prepared. He wasn't going to let foolish people that had known all along what they should have done <coughs> in. They, it was their negligence, not anything he did. It was their negligence that made them uh, miss out on the banquet. It shut him out, it shut him out. Um, Matthew 7, 22 and 23. Let's look at that. Matthew 7, 22 and 23 says, And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. Um, oh, wait a minute. I should have started with 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And yet he still says, I didn't know you, because their hearts were not right. They knew who Jesus was, but they, you know, it's just like that guy knew he had heard of Jesus. He's not going to church, right? right. But had he surrendered his life, right. you know, had he allowed Jesus to be his <coughs> master, you know, had he allowed him to come in and tell him what to do? No, they were still holding on to what they had. And that's what he said there. Yeah, you did all of that. You said you were doing it in my name. But you were really not. <laughs> you know, I never knew you. You never had that relationship with That's me. That's what's really going to be sad. A lot of those people think that they know Jesus as their Savior. And, and they don't. They know of him. Right. Because, you know, the Bible says, uh, narrow is the way to find to where Jesus is. And broad is that gate that a lot of people are traveling on that's going to hell. There, and there's some, we're going to now, we're going to look at some of these, these scriptures where he says <coughs> this because, you know, we keep thinking he will, he will make an exception. He will make an exception for those good people. He will make an exception for those that I love. He's going to make an exception for them. 
but he's not going to make an exception. He knew those girls, not him. When he told this story, they knew that these weren't <coughs> strangers that were in the bridal party. You know, these were not strangers. They had already had rehearsal and all of that other. You know, it was time to come in. The time to prepare for the return of Christ is before he comes. It's not afterward. After is too late. Uh, we have to respond to him before we die. Uh, Hebrews 9.27 Hebrews 9.27 says, And just as it is appointed for people to die once, and after this judgment, you have to be ready. You know, we keep thinking a loving God would not, could not, in some way, save everyone. And we say in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But John you, you 3. You have to accept that gift. Yes. He gave you the gift. But it's just like if you give me a gift and I never open it, then I don't accept it. And that's the way it is with the Lord Jesus. You have to accept his gift. John 3.36, just a few verses later, says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. He lets us know there. I mean, it's just, it's very plain. There's no gray area on that. If you believe, you're saved. If you don't, you're not. I mean, he's very clear about that. Um, we say that we object. We say that God shouldn't judge people. What about the people that have never had a chance? You know, they've never heard the good news. What about them? God made a way for them too. In Romans 1.20, he says, For his invisible attributes, that is, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen since the creation of the world, being understood through what he has made. As a result, people are without excuse. You know, the people that say this is just a hodgepodge, you know, that's just all, you know, no. You should be able to look at his creation and realize there is a God. You know, there is a divine uh, person. Uh, so he says, therefore, be alert, because you don't know either the day or the hour. Uh, if you want to, let's see, some other verses that support this. Matthew 25, 19 through 30, verse 41, verse 46, 2 Thessalonians 1, 5 and 10. Wait a minute. Okay. Second. Second. One, five through ten. In fact, I marked that one. I can read that one. <clears throat> Which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day, the day we're talking about, to be glorified in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe, because our testimony among you was believed. So he, I mean, he's made it very clear. We just like to cherry pick the verses we like, and we pull out the ones we love, and we try to skim over those that we don't. But you know, the whole Bible is the Word of God. We cannot Amen. pick and choose. Um, in Revelation 20, 14 and 15, if you want some more verses. Revelation 20, 14 and 15. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
And the only, we don't have that ink pen. You know, we can't write right. down the names of those we want. Right. We're not, that's not ours. Also, uh, Revelation 21, 8, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Scary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very scary. Okay. Um, you know, he, this theme was through this entire quarter, half of the quarter that we've studied. This theme goes, remember we said in the beginning, this is his longest recorded uh, discourse. This is the longest one where it goes, where all of these are written in red. It goes on and on and on. You're to remember he talked about other parables, the parable of the talents, where he gave a, a talent is equal to about 20 years worth of wages. Yeah. And if you, you took it. I brought that up last week. Very good. But I also brought up about the 10 virgins, and I didn't know that that was in this book. <coughs> you know. Okay, did, did you bring up anything I should have said? Did oh, I bring I out you go ahead and say what you're going to say about that. Well, okay. the thing about the 10 talents, it was just that uh, the people that invested well, the one that increased the man's estate, the one that, that built it up and did what he was supposed to, he worked for the Lord, he, he trusted his master, he loved his master, he was willing to serve and, and make him great. You know, not that he, he was, and when the master came, they gave him more. He said, you've done so well, you get more. And then the one that said, that's not fair. You know, you're a hard task master. I'm not going to want to have what's, you know, what you could do with me. I'm just going to hide it and I'll give it right back to you. And we all know what happened to him. He was taken away. And then you have the sheep and the goats. And you know, do you want to be a sheep or do you want to be a goat? A sheep. There's a song, we sang that at the Law to Emmaus about the yeah. sheep and the goats, and he separates it. So God will separate the righteous from the unrighteous when it comes to the final judgment. There will be separation. You know, it is the thing. We all want to enjoy <coughs> eternal life, and I'm pretty sure all of us in here have accepted Jesus as our Savior. But when you stop and think, there are so many that we love. We dearly want to take with us. We dearly want them to, for Jesus to say, well done. Mm -hmm. So it's up to us. <coughs> he left us here to do it. He told us to. So remember, it's going to be when you least expect it. Yeah. So not, not when you're, you're counting down the days and going, okay, here it is. That's not it. <laughs> that, uh, that part on page 160 about this place called heaven, uh -huh. it has really good. Yeah, that was good. Why don't you, you know, read everybody that? Everybody would, would read that. You know, there's lots of points about heaven in there. Uh, oh, I like read it to me. But I like read it to you. I did too. I underlined a bunch of it. it was I, I did too. I thought it was real good. I know somebody that's in the study right now, I can't say who it is, but the person who was leading it gave them all some money. Mm -hmm. They got 90 days to see how God is going to instruct them how to use that money, how they can bless other people. You can't use it for yourself. You need to pray and, 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 and to do things. And I told that person, when you get that done, let me know. And he said, well, I'll have to tell my leader first. We come back and report. He didn't have to participate. It was a silent thing. But he, anybody that went up there afterwards, he gave them the money to do this to see if they could grow it for the kingdom. I thought it was very, it was about, it's amazing how all these studies, everybody's doing them. It's on the calendar. There's a lot of things I'm looking forward to in heaven. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'm looking forward to is forgetfulness. Yeah, so yeah, I will yeah. remember my sins no more. Amen. You know? Amen. Just like he doesn't remember them, I don't want to remember them either. Amen. Yes, Amen. we won't. We won't. We'll be you. So, Billy, would you close us, please, <laughs> with prayer? Father, we thank you so much for this day, dear Lord. The great day that you've given us. And Father, we just thank you for James, praying to study your lesson. 
forgive us of any sin, Lord, and please be with those in the shootings in Texas, Lord, and just comfort this family, Lord. And Father, we don't know what to say, but we know you do. And so we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Oh, and if y'all don't want your old book, I'll take them to the center for people to have that.